Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have part two of our 10,000 subscriber celebration. There was just too much to put all into one video. So what I did is I broke it up. We did A to Z on vintage. Today we're going to do A to Z on niche and artisanal. And a um, couple points really quick. Number one, is that um, I'm thankful to every single one of you who subscribed, whether you were the first subscriber or the 10,000th subscriber. Um, and I hope you find some value out of these videos. I know that people absolutely love lists. Um, and so the thing about this that makes it a little bit tough is that once we get to some of the letters like V, U, W, Q, it's very hard to find a fragrance that fits. So I have taken some liberty in... Um, just making sure we at least had something for the list. Like in one of these, it was like I either put the fragrance that I put in here or there was just not going to be a fragrance for the letter, right? So, um, and then others, there's so many that I'm struggling. Like I would, which one do I pick, you know? So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that, especially when we talk about niche and artisanal, well, niche, every single letter is filled. The artisanal space, there's a lot of letters where there's nothing, and then there's a lot of letters where there will be more than one that I want to talk about, mostly because that's where my focus has been lately. I think the artisanal space has so much to offer, especially for people who want to dive deeper. Um, and so we're, we're going to talk about maybe more than just one on A, and then maybe we won't talk about one on B or C, and then talk about a couple on D kind of thing, right? So that's the way that the video is going to go. But first, we have an unboxing. And this is sent to me by um, Jared. So thank you, Jared. Very kind of you to do this out of the blue. Um... And I know what's in here, sort of, because he um, told me what was in here. And I uh, read the email because I could not keep it a secret. Um, but just this is going to be, I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible because we have a lot to cover today. A lot. Um, so I said it when we did our Robes 08 interview. And by the way, I shipped his um, fragrances on Friday that I promised to send him. So he's going to be getting five vintage decants because that's all the decants that I had left. And I did not want to wait for the great Anuj to get back from uh, vacation to send me some more decants. He said he would. And so um, I just shipped them. I just shipped what I had. And then we can always do a part two. Shipping wasn't even that bad. It was like 35 bucks or something from here to Canada. So not a big deal. Um, not a big deal at all. So let's see. Let's see what we get. Um, I know some of you love unboxing videos and some of you hate it. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be a bunch of ahoods. Uh, um, so let me, well first let me make sure I don't throw anything away that's actually in here. Um, okay. So these are cool. These are actually musk grains. So like for example this is Siberian musk grains which I have some from, um, I think that uh, maybe the Kashti house sent me some. I can't remember which person sent me some musk grains, but somebody did. It was either Prakar or the Kashti guy. Um, so there's Mongolian musk grains, Siberian musk, and Castor. So this is a Castorium sack grains. Um, and then we have... Um, Siberian musk... Siberian deer musk grains. So, so yes, um, that is awesome because these are actually pretty hard to find. Um, so that's one. The second thing, and I'm pretty sure this is where the ouds are going to come in. Yes. Yes, it is. So I'll just give you an example of what he sent. This is not trash. Don't, don't throw it away. Uh, um, I'll open this one later. And then inside of here we've got... Things like, um, so different types of oud. So, um, Mar Maroque oud. I did get a burner finally. Burn. Kali Mantra and Super, um, this is a super chip. So that's a pretty big size chip. So I don't know if you burn it whole or if you like scrape pieces off and burn the shavings. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to play with this later. I mean, look at the time. And actually what's funny is that, so like this particular one says ant nest on it, right? 
So this is off from an oud tree where an ant nest actually is what did the infecting. Sometimes insects will penetrate the tree and bring the fungus in. Sometimes just the tree will get wounded or injured somehow. Most plantation ouds are drilled with a hole, you know, to, to wound the tree and then pumped full of, you know, some sort of molasses structure, which will, which will make it be infected. Um, and, and so like, here's some frankincense. So very beautiful, very kind. Very kind gift from Jared. He is um, he is a very fast study, and I'll tell you what, he's been really digging his hands into the material side of things. So here's some um, here's some um, little coals. If you've ever had like hookah or something, they'll put these coals on top. Someone was telling me the way to do it is to let the coal get like a little layer of ash around it first, and the ash works as almost like a um, like an incubator you know it keeps the oud from burning too hot and so i'm gonna i'm gonna play with this and try to burn some of these and kind of see how it goes um the guy from rising phoenix jk delap kindly sent me these little incense sticks and they smell phenomenal someone was telling me um that there is a, a subgroup there's always subgroups in the fragrance community but there's a subgroup of um incense where people will use very high-end ouds like someone was telling me that um they will actually use like Ensar ouds and stuff like that in the incense sticks. And, and they're, they go for big money. Like they sell out instantly almost. Um, and I'll tell you what, just like this particular one says, Sinking Natrang from Rising Phoenix. And I just took the cap off the other day and smelled it. It smells absolutely phenomenal. Um, I mean, phenomenal, even without burning it. So I can't wait to burn these and kind of get to know them. And... Um, and burn some of this stuff and just see how it all goes. And then, of course, he sent me these beautiful, you know, individual ouds and atars and stuff like that. So thank you, Jared. A beautiful gift, my friend. Um, I am absolutely overwhelmed with stuff. I tried um, two Rising Phoenix ouds last night to bed. One of them was from, the guy said the, the on the packaging that it was distilled in 1936. I mean, you think about that. Before World War II, they distilled it. Um, and, and so it did smell old, but it smelled very black, very dark, um, you know, very, very, um, just kind of, you know, like imagine like black tire burning. Um, and, and so it was, uh, it definitely smelled antique. It smelled of old furniture and old libraries and old, you know, almost fungal in a way, but nutty fungal, very interesting oud. I'll, um, maybe I'll do like a live stream where we touch on some of the ouds he sent me and, and. He did say he'd come on the channel, so I thought that would be fun, but okay, so enough with the unboxing. Thank you, Jared. This will be a lot of fun to get to um, and play with in my downtime. Okay, so let's do scent of the day real quick, and then we're going to hop into this video, because this is going to be a long video. So like I said, I hope you got your seatbelt on. Um, I know you guys like some of these long videos, but um, if you want to see the vintage version of this video, it is on the channel. And so scent of the day today, scent of the day today is uh, Falcar. It from the Le Gem series from Bulgari, and just to show how high quality it is, look at this. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. You know, definitely worth 300 bucks right there. But um, this is a creation by Jacques Cavalier, who um, of course is the Louis Vuitton in-house perfum perfumer, and Louis Vuitton owns Bulgari, and so he's kind of the Bulgari in-house perfumer as well. Um, and this is kind of like a it's a oud and musk and leather and saffron fragrance, but as far as like one of the better Western ouds, if you want to call it that, okay, whatever, I'm not going to argue whether it has real oud or it doesn't. Um, if the brand says it has real oud, it has real oud, go with what the brand says, but it smells to me like a Western take on oud, but a very well done Western take on oud. Uh, Bangladeshi, Bangladeshian oud is apparently the type of oud that's supposed to be used. And, you know, you get little hints of things like chocolate or coffee or this bitter, earthy aroma, you know, um, balsamic and very rich in texture. Uh, and the musk note here, while obviously synthetic, is is pretty well done. It's a, um, it's a black musk, as they call it, which apparently black musk, there's blue musk, there's white musk, and they're all different synthetic types of musk, but... Um, this is my scent of the day. I'm going to go watch the fight tonight with some friends, so I figured I better wear something a little bit more mainstream rather than the real ouds I've been wearing lately. Quote-unquote real ouds. Um, well, let's just call it the artisanal oud to be safer. The artisanal oud section. So I'm wearing Bulgari's um, Falcar today. 
the only one from this line that I own. Um, so there you have it. Uh, that's my sense of the day. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's get started with A. A was very easy for me. And actually, if it wasn't for this fragrance, I would not be here. It's probably one of my most worn fragrances uh, from 2010. It is like the fragrance that started many folks' addiction into this hobby. It is Creed's Aventus. Now, this particular bottle is the old four ounce bottles. Um, this is a 2015 batch. From 2012 on, I've owned every single batch. So not every single batch, I'm sorry, but at least one from each year, let's say. So started in 2012, 2013, 14. This is the, I just used up my 14 bottle. This is the 15. I have a 16 and a 17 waiting and I'm done. That's it. Once those are gone, no more Aventus for me. And you can see, this is like more than half gone already. So, um, you know, I do wear this. I like it. It's a fruity Sheepra. I think that the older bottles that where they could use more oak moss because, you know, that's what it was all about. Sheepras were all about contrast. I love Sheepras. This is an example of a well done fruity Sheepra. It's just that pineapple note mixing with the apple. Um, you know, the older ones, the older batches I felt like had more of a red apple feel. It's not like a green apple like, um, you know, like um, Promise or something like that. It's more of a red apple to me. Uh, the old batches were. Now, I think that's kind of changed and the pineapple note has been amped up and, you know, you get the argument between a smoky batch and not smoky batch, which one has pi pineapple, all that stuff. I just found that from 2017 and before, Aventus was great. I got a flat cone. Actually, that's not true because I had a flat cone from 2018 and I went through the entire 250 mil because I would spray it on, it would be gone in an hour. Like literally gone. No, I would spray it on before work, go to the office and say, hey, can you smell this? And they would go, nope. Not, but, but on the drive to work, it would go away. And I was furious, like uh, like furious, furious. And I was like, never again, ne never again am I buying a newer Creed. All my Creeds will be older from that point on. So anyways, A is for Aventus. Um, now we have some honorable mentions on the artisanal side of things. The first one is going to be uh, Bortnikoff's Amber Cologne, and I've done a full review of this if you want to check it out, but this is probably my favorite from the Cologne series. Um, although there are some other good ones, go watch my, my playlist, I've reviewed some of the other ones, like Moss Cologne and stuff like that. But Amber Cologne is, is probably my favorite of the bunch. It is just, it's just, to me, an objectively beautiful fragrance. The citruses in here are so realistic. It's got brown and, um gray ambergris in the base. The ambergris makes it sparkle. It's perfect for Texas for me because it has this, um, you know, it just feels like this celebratory type fragrance, you know, like you're going out, you're going to make a statement, you're going to have a good time on your birthday or Father's Day. You know, that's the time I want to reach for this. Um, it does have real ouds in there, but the ouds are very fresh and clean and it has that Bortnikoff floral touch, which Bortnikoff uses florals like no one else. The frangipani in here has this tropical feel to it. It's, it's, it's beautiful, and it has the Bortnikoff um, sort of signature cardamom in the top. Um, beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Go watch my full review if you want a detailed review of Amber Cologne. Okay, so the other A is Antiquity, and this is one of my all-time favorite Arise La Dore creations. Uh, Antiquity is um, a fragrance that is supposed to be, and you can see how, how little I have left. Antiquity is... Peach, bergamot, aldehydes, Cambodian oud, carnation, patchouli, angelica, Russian leather, musk, amber, patchouli, and oak moss. It's supposed to be a perfume that represents this long gone era from long ago. Um, and it uses wild Cambodian agarwood from 1975. Again, vintage agarwood usually means good. Not always, not always, but usually when you see older agarwood being used, um, that's when they could find, it was easier to find the rarer, trees without searching miles and miles and miles and only, you know, coming across one or something like that. But this, when I reviewed this, I said that this is, feels like you're on a train going back in time and you go back to the days when Jacques Guerlain was creating fragrances for Guerlain. And if Guerlain was using real oud, this is what it would smell like to me. Antiquity is just stunning. Um, a scent of a bygone era is the way Russian Adam calls it. The Russian leather is, I love the leather note in here. I love the vintage feel, the aldehydes, everything. Go watch my review. And for those of you who are like, oh, Ramsey's a shill because he gets, well, first of all, Russian Adam has never sent me a free bottle. That's the first thing ever. Um, 
And the second thing is when you go watch my reviews of this, I reviewed them off of a little tiny little decan he sent me. He sent me like two mils, if that, one mil. And um, I'm sitting there like trying to get the damn thing to work. And, and I loved it so much I had to go hunt down a bottle on a lot of these. A lot of these Arise Ladores you see me talking so highly about, don't think he sent me these. He didn't. I bought these. Um, all right, next on the list we have Agar de Noir. So, by the way, I'm only showing full bottles, all right? So we're not going to go into the decant route. That would make this even crazier. So we're just going with the full bottles. But A, Agar de Noir. I've reviewed this one as well on the channel. This is a strange one because it is very spicy. There's lots of spices like calamus, um, arnica, cardamom. There's some guyac wood. But it's about this kind of resinous, sort of um, benzoin, balsamic, um, coffee, ambergris, and oud, but lots of like balsams and resins. It's very sticky and black, you know, and if you look at the juice, Agar de Noir, obviously, um, the bottle is, I think, just a work of art. And um, not my favorite, Arige La Dore. I like it. It's not my favorite, um, but still worth a sniff. It has lots of powdery, violety feelings to it, um, but still worth a sniff. Not the... Um, not like the reference coffee oud fragrance for me, although it is a coffee oud. It goes in a little different direction, but go watch my review if you want to learn more about that. Okay, next on the list, we have the final, I think, A, um, and that is going to be Ambrosia. Now, this is a reference ambergris fragrance for me. First, actually, when I reviewed this in 2023, I said that uh, this was Prakar of Sherwood kind of taking the next step, okay? So... His, his fragrance house um, originally was trying to create quality fragrances for little money. This is the first time he kind of took the next step and started competing with the Aris Ladores and the Ensars, in, in my opinion. And the Castorium in here, mixed with the Oud, mixed with the real Ambergris and Bulgarian Lavender, which he loves using. I mean, there's so many notes in here, I couldn't even read them all to you. Um, but there's some Birch Tar, but mostly you get the Oud, castorium and ambergris in the beginning and the ambergris will blow you away um probably one of the best uses of ambergris i've come across in in recent memory and like i said this is where i feel like he kind of took the next step and started to compete with the big boys so if you're not familiar with sherwood um this is a house to definitely check out this was sent to me for free by him uh, but many of my other Sherwood reviews that are not from these bottles like this, I did off of Decant. So you can go watch, go watch my, I have a whole playlist. Go watch my reviews. Um, there's one, like, for example, there's one called Paradise, which I did off of, a, off of a sample. Can't find it. I would love a bottle of Paradise. It's probably my favorite um, from the house that I don't own. Um, and Paradise is just an absolute gem it's it the oud in there I, I have no clue how he had how he used such an amazing oud note and kept the price under 100 bucks on paradise no clue um okay next on the list we're going to b so b is going to be in the niche world bellamy vetiver so i did bellamy in the vintage space um for me you know hermes some call it a designer some call it a niche but I'm going with Bellamy Vetiver because I, I felt like a flanker should be used in here. I don't think we have any other flankers, so I wanted to get a flanker in there. And this is my favorite flanker of all time. I think this is the greatest flanker ever created. Basically, Jean-Claude Elena adding Vetiver to Bellamy, uh, maybe a little bit of Civet or something else, but it's just absolutely stunning with the Vetiver. Um, leathery, spicy. It keeps the soul of Bellamy. And, and you know, Bellamy is a strong, powerful creation. And Jean-Claude Elena is known for his watercolor, smooth, sort of, um, you know, transparent, airy is, is a way to describe him. So he really went against what he's used to creating when he did Bellamy Vetiver and, and stayed with, um, he stayed with what was sort of the true heart and soul of Bellamy. You can see the guy there getting ready in the mirror. Um, rumor had it they were going to discontinue this, and I'm very glad they did not. So, um, apparently this is not being discontinued from what I've heard, but, um, but yeah, there was a time there where I thought they were going to discontinue this, and I was like, idiots, please don't do that, and, and apparently they did not. Okay, so we're going on to C. Now, I did cheat a little bit, well, maybe not cheat, but took some liberty on this one, because C, we're going with Creation E by Roja. And by the way, you're going to see a lot of the same niche brands in, in here. So um, 
you're going to see lots of creeds, lots of amouage, lots of um, rojas, you know, these type of brands in the niche world, because those are the brands I have lots of bottles of. Um, and so C, I went with Creation E. The reason I say I'm taking some liberty here is because this is only like this in America. All over the rest of the world, it's called Enigma Pour Homme. Apparently, there was some sort of a copyright issue where they couldn't use Enigma in the United States. But um, I love this fragrance. It's one of my favorite sort of um, cognac fragrances. It is a little bit sweet. If I could change anything about it, I would tone down the way that the vanilla and the benzoin was used. I do like the use of heliotrope in here. And um, I love the cola opening. The opening to this gives this Coca-Cola feel on your skin, which I absolutely adore. I've done a comparison video between this and the Parfum Cologne version. They're both good. You know, I, I wouldn't say the Parfum Cologne is bad, but um, there are differences. You know, the Parfum Cologne felt more diet, like diet cola. This one felt more like actual Coca-Cola or or the, the, the Parfum Cologne was like... Um, cherry Pepsi or something and, and, and diet cherry Pepsi. And this was actual Pepsi. So anyways, all right, so that's C. Um, for C on the artisanal side, we're going to go with Quirtis, which um, I have not done a full review on on the channel by itself, but I have discussed this on a live stream. So you can go check out my um, Musk's collection live stream. Russian Adam sent me a sample set. Um, and, and so I, like I said, I, I ended up getting the bottle, but he sent me the sample set. So Quirtis, um, is a fragrance that uses this, um, wild beaver tail oil, which is kind of like castorium to the nth degree, uh, times 10, you know, but it's not, so it's not as animalic as, um, his Queer de Russi, which I, I would take a bottle of Queer de Russi over this. But many people said, can you create a version of Queer de Russi where it's like safe to put on your skin? That's kind of how I view this. You know, it has this vintage Queer de Russi style accord in here. Um, but there, there, there isn't that um, unregulated un, um, birch tar. You, so you can put this one on skin, unlike the Queer de Russi where you're not supposed to. But the packaging is fantastic. I'm very happy to have a bottle of Quirtis. And the other C on the list in the artisanal space is Chypre du Nord, which I reviewed on the channel. So you can check out Chypre du Nord. Many of these, there are full reviews because I've been focusing on, on the artisanal space lately because that's what's been interesting me. Interesting me. Um, and Chypre du Nord is not the strongest Bortnikoff. It does share some similarities with uh, Musk Habib, but here there is a peach. Um, it's, I think it's the real Siberian deer musk that was used in Chypre du Nord. There's also a real deer musk in Muscovy, but we'll talk about that in a second. But this doesn't have the big, huge uh, Ylang Ylang note here. They decided to use peach to go more in the vintage Chypre style. A, a very nice Chypre, you know, spicy and, and well done. You know, real oak moss and all that stuff here. Birch tar. Um, I, I don't think it's Bortnikoff's best work or anything like that, but it is But it is very nice. So Chypre du Nord, if you're a Chypre fan, definitely one to check out. Okay, and then, staying with C, we have Sherwood's SAR, which, um, again, I reviewed this one off of a decant. You can go watch my review. Um, SAR is full of notes. It's um, sweet, resinous. I think it's one of the best from this series. This, this was like a series he did where it was like $80 for this. And, and for $80, I don't know if you can come across a fragrance that is better value for money. Like, let me just give you an example of the note listing. Brazilian orange, clary sage, geranium, Italian bergamot, lime, mandarin orange, nutmeg, orange blossom, rosemary, and tangerine. That is the top. Heart of Bulgarian lavender, chamomile, damask rose, gardenia, heliotrope, hyacinth, iris, jasmine, sambac, Madagascan, ylang ylang, neroli, omani, frankincense, rosewood, tonka bean, and tuberose. That is the heart. Base of ambergris, castorium, civet, Cypriol, Gaiac wood, Guarjum balsam, musk, oak moss, orris root, patchouli, sandalwood, Spanish labdanum, styrax, vanilla, and Virginia cedar. I don't know if you can get any more bang for your buck for $80 than, or maybe a hundred bucks or whatever this sold for. Um, it is just phenomenal. I mean, the level of perfumery here, value for money. Now, I think this is only a 30 mil bottle or maybe it was a 50 mil. I can't remember. Um, and it doesn't say it on here, I don't think, but, um, Either way, fantastic work by um, Prakar Gupta. He has come on the channel. There was an interview if you'd like to see him speak and 
I'm very excited for, for the future of, um, for, of this house of Sherwood. Of all of the new houses that have kind of popped up on the scene, this is one of the ones I'm most excited about. Okay. Next on the list, we have another Sherwood, and this is the one that came out this year called Crisos. Now, Crisos, um, I, I do have a Crisos video where I discussed it when I, I think, unboxed it and, and kind of talked about it for the first time. Um, I don't know if I've done like a full individual review on this, but I think we discussed a lot of the high level points in the unboxing. Um, but this is a fragrance that focuses on real musk and sandalwood. Okay, those are kind of the two focuses, I would say, on, on Crisos. This beautiful sandalwood, um, which Mysore, of course, he's, in, he's Indian. So Mysore sandalwood, real Mysore is used here, and Ceylonese sandalwood. Um, and, but really, many people gave this a hard time because it's a little bit softer. It doesn't have the oud profile of like Paradise or some of the other fragrances which were heavier. But the Provincial Lavender, um, you know, the cardamom, the spices, the florals in here are beautiful. And, and even though um, it doesn't have this heavy hitting side to it, if it did, it would block out the Mysore Sandalwood. That's the problem. Mysore, it's funny because everyone wants Mysore Sandalwood. You know, it's like, it's almost like this mythical thing. Oh, Mysore Sandalwood. Um, but then if you use all these heavy ingredients, it it blocks it out. You know, it, blot, it blots it out. Um, just like a cloud blotting out the sun. The sun may still be there, but it's kind of blocked out, right? You're not getting the, the effect of, of the sun like you would on a beautiful sunny day. So they try try not to use heavy ingredients that would that would overtake the Mysore Sandalwood. And and there are some ingredients in here that are heavy. There's um, Amiris, Labdanum, Frankincense Absolute, Sumatra Patchouli, stuff like that. But, um, you know, it was used in a way where it still allows the real musk and sandalwood to shine. It's beautiful. Chrysos is beautiful. Um, if you are a real musk fan, if you've never smelled real musk before, I would urge you to try to get your nose on some real musk fragrances. They just cannot be, um, you know, no matter how good white musk can be or synthetic musk, and I do think they are good. I like some synthetic musk. We'll talk about one today. Um, but it just cannot replicate the beauty of real musk. Okay, next on the list, we have D. So D is probably one of the easiest ones. A and D... Um, were in J. A, D, and J were probably the easiest three letters to do in here. So D, we are going to Diaghilev. And of course, we're going to Diaghilev in, in the niche space. I mean, uh, I look at that and I'm like, God, I don't have very much juice left, but I love this stuff. I did a top 100 niche fragrance. And if you know me, you know where this landed. Um, this is, for me, this is a pure love. This was not sent to me by the brand, by the way. Uh, um, this is This is a purchase that I made. And, um, oh, I mean, I love vintage perfumery. I love vintage chifras. I think this takes something like, you know, you could take something like Bandi by, um, um, Robert Piguet, or you could take something like Azure by Estee Lauder and blend it with Mitsuko. And you kind of are in the ballpark of Diaghilev, but I love the sweaty, sexual cumin and, and animalics. This is a very um, suggestive fragrance, okay? It's a very suggestive fragrance, but I love it. Um, Diagolev, D. And so we're going to go straight to E, um, which I'm told comes after D. And for E, we are going with Epic Man by Amouage. So the first, but definitely not the last Amouage. Epic Man is, I mean, it is epic. It is right in the heart of the of that era of, of uh, Christopher Chong perfumery. Um, Epic Man is, go watch my review. I mean, it is one of my favorite spicy fragrances of all time. It is more than that. I do think uh, as far as using uh, castorium, not like the, the actual, like uh, some of these artisanal houses will use like the actual castorium beaver sack, you know, um, when you're creating some sort of castorium note in a niche fragrance like this, usually it's an accord that the perfumer creates, but amouage between this and, um, and imitation man, two of the best sort of castorium accords I've ever smelled. They are fantastic. And God, the cumin, the myrtle, I mean, it's like, it's like being on the, um, Silk Road, and you're sitting there at, at night in the desert when it kind of gets cool, the temperature drops after being hot all day. You're there, you're next to a camel, and you're telling stories around the campfire, and someone like throws some spice in the fire, and it just ignites into this green, 
you know, smoke that just kind of everyone stops in their tracks and looks at and you can smell the spice explosion. It's spicy, it's woody, it is, it is, I mean, for me, this is like one of my all-time favorite amouages. Um, e, Epic Man. Okay, so we, we do have a um, E fragrance to discuss in the um, artisanal space, and this is Ensar Oud's EO number one. The only Ensar on this list, because it's the only Ensar I have a full bottle of, um, but EO number one for Ensar Oud number one. Uh, and if you don't know the story behind this little leather pouch right here, it was done by a man named Habib Dingle. And he's he is like an all-star in the leather-making community. He made all of these by hand. And he actually made a um, leather binder for, for a Bible for Pope John Paul II in the Pope's Bible Project. Um, and, and if you see, he loves using full-grain leather. Look at the imperfections in the leather there. But it's so... Oh, if you could smell the inside of this, that gives you an idea of what this smells like. This is phenomenal stuff. Um, you know, it's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's it's. I've done a full review. I love it even more now than when I reviewed it. When I reviewed it, I was like, man, I don't know if this is worth the price. And, and I got it discounted off of a friend, to be fair. Um, but he uses castorium in a way, which castorium is probably my favorite animalic note because it creates this warm, leathery you know, um, like you're just being wrapped in leather, uh, and it is mixed with ouds. There's some Thai oud in here. There's resins. There's, um, Gallic rose, bourbon rose, Himalayan rose, Turkish rose. There's all these beautiful roses. Um, and you get that Ensar sparkle, which, which I think is coming from the ambergris that's being used here. Tobacco, Assam Oud as well in the base with Ethiopian frankincense, papau, sandalwood, tree moss, and vanilla. I mean, yes, it is leathery, but this could easily be a signature scent for me. It's not, you know, it's it's uh, um, it's probably the closest thing in the artisanal space that I've come across that acts the same way for me as Antaeus. Like, I would wear this in the same situation as Antaeus because Antaeus has that castorium, but it has that Chanel sparkle about it, that class, you know? This acts very similar. It has the leather, the castorium, the funk from the real oud, but the sparkle from the ambergris, the real um, ambergris used in the base, gives off this um, highlight of the other notes in a way that just, you know, it's like sunlight sparkling off the water, but um, not in an aquatic way, in like a highlighting the other notes way, and it's beautiful. I love EO number one. Fantastic stuff. One of Ensar's best, in my personal opinion. Okay, next on the list we have... The only Serge Luton on the list, which is actually a little bit of a tragedy. There should have been more Serges on here, but, you know, there's only one fragrance for each leather. So, in the knee space. Um, <clears throat> sorry to keep doing that in your ear, but um, something's going around. You know, when you have a little kid that goes to daycare, it's it's impossible. You know, you just forget it. Just give me the germs, you know. Um but this one's called Filin Aguil for F. Filin Aguil. This is one of my all-time favorite pine resins. You know, it literally feels like you put your hand in a pine tree and it got all resinous. And then in the background, far away, you're in the forest. You can smell a fire, you know, off in the distance burning. Um, smoky, earthy res. I mean, Christopher Sheldrake. I mean, what can you say? Christopher Sheldrake, an absolute master of his craft. One of the greatest perfumers of all time. Um, my two cents. My two cents. Okay. So from F, we go straight to G. And G is Erosia. And it is Great Britain. Um, Great Britain is kind of like a rosied up version of Queer Canage, which Queer Canage, I think, is kind of a take on Serge Luton's Queer Maresque. So there you have it. Um, but I really do like this. I have a travel atomizer. That's why it looks like this has not been used very much. But um, I also have a travel atomizer that I've been using first. But Great Britain is. Um, I think one of my favorite rojas, it's a, he calls it a Russian leather. It doesn't feel like a traditional Russian. Maybe it is in a sense. Um, it smells more like a take on queer canage, to be honest with you, but it's sage, lemon, bergamot, may rose, violet. Ro Roja loves using violet. You know, if you look at the purple cap, it gives you an idea of that soft violet that's kind of used in here. 
Um, Jasmine from Gross, Leather Ambrette. I love Ambrette. It's that musk mallow. We talked about it in the previous video we did where I mentioned Furio. Um, Gaiac wood, iris, carrot seed, cedar wood, juniper, labdanum, oak moss, patchouli, styrax, tolu balsam, ambergris, and clove. And it is phenomenal. Um, like I said, leathery, woody, one of my favorite roses. Um, Fantastic. And the iris, the purple, little delicate, powdery iris flower in there with the leather is stunning. Um, I love iris and leather together. That combination is a, if I ever had a fragrance line, that would be one. I would have to have an iris leather. Um, okay, so we're moving on. Actually, we're staying with G's, excuse me. And we're going to go to Sherwood's Gentleman, which again, there's a full review on the channel if you want to check it out. Gentleman, I called it a freshie because there's lots of citruses and greens um, lots of lavender. He loves using that Bulgarian lavender. Um, there's kind of the image of gentlemen wearing the suit, walking in the field. Um, and it does feel very gentlemanly, very classy. I called it a freshie because it's got lots of limes and bergamots and Amalfi lemons and all this stuff. It's in a huge floral heart. Um, but one of the things about this that stands out is this beautiful green tea note he used. Green tea absolute. There is still castorium and leather and labdanum and all this stuff in the base, but it wears like a freshie to me. It just, I mean, uh, Noah made fun of me, but it, it, it's, a, it's one of his fresher fragrances. Let's put it that way. It's like a citrusy green fragrance on an oriental base, but it wears that those citruses last and last. And one of the things about houses like this, you know, real oud, for example, which I think I don't know if there is an oud note in here or not, but um, let's say there's real castorium and all this other stuff. Those type of materials do continue to evolve as time goes on, in, in, whereas many of the synthetics you're getting in some of the designers, they're not going to evolve in the way that, let's say, a real oud note in, let's say, the NSAR I showed would continue to evolve as time goes on. So one thing I've noticed about these is when you first spray, you go away for a month or two and you come back and you try it again, it smells different. It it not totally different, but it does change. You know, this is one, these type of brands, that's one where it, there's actually some truth to the fact that you need to not macerate. I'm not saying you need to macerate, but I am saying you need to get some air in the bottle and really let it open up. Um, so yes, Sherwood Gentleman for G. Um, okay, next on the list, we are going to H. And H is going to be a Creed. Um... Second Creed on the list, and for H, we have Himalaya, Creed's Himalaya, which I um, reviewed on the channel. This is my second bottle. I had, um, I want to say like a 2010 or 2011 bottle from back in the day, and I used it all up. It was a four ounce. It was a big boy, too, like the Aventus bottle I showed. I used, used the whole thing, the whole 120 mils, and... Then I bought this. This is a 2017 batch. So still before, still when Creed was Creed before BlackRock bought them and then before BlackRock sold them to Caring. And now Caring is just like trying to make it uh, Creed Initio like Parfum de Marley, you know, like they're trying to just make it like every other. They're, they're killing the Creed aesthetic from what I hear. I haven't smelled any of the new fragrances, but I do not hear good things. Um, so this was still before all of that, but even here in 2017, it had been changed. Um, still good, a, still a beautiful sandalwood, a fresh, you know, Creed does freshness very well. You, you spray this, and that was a Pierre Bourdon thing as well. Pierre Bourdon, you know, after he made Koros, which is one of my favorite animalic fragrances of all time, he wanted to then move on and make the greatest fresh fragrances of all time. And it was very important to him, like when he released uh, Green Irish Tweed and then Cool Water, it was very important to him that um, it did not smell like Dracar Noir because Dracar Noir was like the gold standard of freshness back in the early 80s. He wanted, he did not want someone to say, oh, you just took a Dracar Noir clone or something like that. He wanted it to be totally different. And um, so it was very important for him to create freshness in a different way. And this fragrance, I went into the backstory a little bit, but there's a gunpowder note in Himalaya. And that gunpowder note was um, created with the sitting Dior director before that guy ended up leaving, because he made a fragrance for Dior called Dolce Vita, um, which was also very important to Pierre Bourdon because his father worked for Dior, and he felt like creating a Dior fragrance is like the height of his career, right? And so this opens up with the Creed freshness, beautiful bergamot, lemon, and mandarin orange um, with pepper. That gunpowder note makes itself known. And, you know, there's something very metallic, very cool, very cooling about this. Like, this was supposed to be like a like a flask, like a canteen, like a water canteen that 
that uh, Olivier Creed apparently took on one of his Himalayan adventures. Um, I would love to see him climbing Himala mount mountains in Himalaya. But um, it's really the Creed, like the patented cedarwood, sandalwood combination in the base, which is beautiful. It is. I mean, you just have to... It's fresh, it's citrusy, the sandalwood is smooth and milky and beautiful. Um, and Creed does these type of perfumes very well. Great for the office. So go watch my full review if you want to kind of learn some of those details I discussed. But H is Himalaya. Um, okay, going straight to I. Um, I, huh, I was a toss-up for me, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'll tell you which one did not make the cut real quick, but it almost did. It was this. Um, Imitation Man. Uh, Imitation Man is f phenomenal. Oh, man. And there's a full review of this. I reviewed it in a hotel, actually, which had, had this weird back wall behind me or something that kind of looked like it went with the review, strangely enough. That was pure accident. Um, but I have to go with Interlude Man because this is kind of the M. This is the M. Wage. Like, when I smelled this for the first time, I remember thinking... I have to understand, like, what is going, what am I smelling? You know what I mean? Like, this was so captivating to me because, you know, a, a lot of my early purchases were creeds. Um, and uh, I don't think I started with Aventus. I think I started with the Himalayas and the Millicene Imperials. And I, I always go away from what is kind of being hyped and, and like to go my own path. But eventually I found my way to Amwaj. And when I found Interlude, I remember thinking... What on God's green earth am I smelling? It's spicy, smoky, resinous. Like it feels like, you know, the resins are like bubbling up in front of you in some tent in India or something. Like you're, you know, in an opium tent in China and they're burning incense sticks. And and that oregano opening was so strange. Um, and of course, the apopanax, the resins, the myrrh, the oud, the leather. I was infatuated with interlude man and still am to be quite fair i'm gonna do like an interlude through the years interlude versus interlude black iris versus interlude 53 one day um since i have the juice and um man interlude is it's hard for some people to wear like i know eugene said when he wore interlude he used to make him angry um uh, because it's so like chaotic and if you look at the box there's like lines and stuff everywhere but I love it from an artistic standpoint. Like, this is what Amouage should be doing. This type of perfume. You know, the perfume that um, captivates, that you act like you're, you're, you've are you never smelled anything like this before. That's what Amouage should be doing. Not designers in an Amouage bottle that they charge 500 bucks for. That's not Amouage. That's not what a true niche house should be doing. Again, my two cents. My two cents. Um, so, yes, but I interlude. Um... Okay, now, on the artisanal side, we're going to talk about one of my favorite real musk fragrances. And this one is very hard to find because I think this was a one-run fragrance. Like, they only did 200 bottles, 300 bottles for the whole world, or whatever initially got put out. And then he never did a second batch because this fragrance is filled with little tinctures and co-distillations that Russian Adam made himself. That it would just be impossible to recreate is how he explained it to me. But this is called Inverno Russo. But for me, bang for the buck, my my two cents. My God, man. Um, this fragrance is um, the way it's the way it was described by Russian Adam to me. Is this was his like dream fragrance, like his poetic dream fragrance. So it was supposed to sort of balance this brutality of the Russian winter being outside in the cold while while being inside in your own home next to the fireplace being quiet and cozy and you know all that stuff safe while the winter is just go I, I can imagine you know living in Texas I, I only can imagine what a Russian winter must be like um and so he told me that here he tinctured both the inside of the of the musk the grains themselves, which are usually very powdery and soft, and um, also the outside, the skin, which is usually very animalic and leathery and pissy and bloody and the, the dirtier parts of the musk, okay? And there's all these weird little co-absolutes in here, like White Rose Alba, which I know Sultan Pasha loves using White Rose. He uses some beautiful White Rose Albas in his atars. Um, 
and white pepper, you know, so he's trying to give this feeling of like white snow outside, peach blossom, osmanthus co-absolute extracted by Russian Adam, white frankincense distilled by Russian Adam, white gardenia, white champaca, clove, cardamom, Indian sandalwood, tonka bean absolute, tinctures of legally obtained wild Siberian deer musk pod and the skin and synthetic civet with rare wild canine agarwood oil aged over five years, Indian oud oil, white Indonesian uh, garu boya betel leaf, and Virginian cedar wood and benzoin. Um, it is it is one of my all-time favorite musk fragrances I've ever encountered, real musk fragrances. It is really something special. Um, Inverno Russo for I. Okay, next on the list, we go to J. And again, I said... Um, for me, A, D, and J were the absolute no-brainer. So this is Jubilation 25. So Jubilation 25, again, total no-brainer. I don't even need to think about it. Um, Bertrand Duchafour's Masterpiece, Blackberry, Frankincense, Labdanum, Divana, Clove, uh, Orchid, Honey, Myrrh, Oud, Moss, Omani, and Ambergris, which, by the way, many people don't know this, but something like 30% of the world's Ambergris naturally washes up onto the beaches of Oman, um, just because of the way that the currents move. So maybe that's one of the reasons why Oman always had such an amazing perfume hub, so to speak, going back centuries. Uh, Papanax, Immortel, Tree Mosque, and Patchouli, Myrrh, Moss. Oh, it's in that blackberry note. I mean, Bertrand Duchafour uses these strange notes in a way that sets his fragrances apart. He really is, I think, one of the masters of perfume from like 2010... Or, or let's say by the time he made Timbuktu, so 2004 to like 2020 or whatever it was, I would just put him as one of the greatest creators. Some of his new stuff has been so-so, but this is just vintage Bertrand Duchafour. I think he's been just kind of being, he's been getting paid to do weird fragrances for these strange houses. Like he did, he did some work for Amafi, you know, and his fragrances sell for like five grand or something just, crazy you know if you want to laugh go watch my amafi review by the way um but yeah jubilation 25 for man is probably the easiest j one of the easiest letters in this whole list um okay moving on to k we are going to kinski by kinski now this is a 2012 release so it is very modern but it is extremely hard to find it got discontinued early and um for whatever reason, bottles just dried up very quickly. And you can tell it looks like the um, molecule bottles that Giza Schoen does, right? The essential molecules or whatever they call it, because it's the same. It's his brand. It's Giza Schoen. This is Giza Schoen's masterpiece to me. I And I've smelled a lot of his work. A lot of his stuff is very boring and very mainstream and easy to wear. This is the masterpiece. This is the one where he used cannabis, castorium, aldehydes, marine notes, which is crazy. Um... Hedion, Rose, Nutmeg, Labdanum, Patchouli, Vetiver, Styrax, Suede. I am in love with Kinski by Kinski. It's one of the it's one of the best celebrity fragrances I've ever smelled. Forget about the man himself. Klaus Kinski was a little nuts. But sometimes they say, with genius comes a little madness, you know, and this captures the madness of the man. Like it really captures maybe like an illness around him. Um, and yet he shows us these flashes of brilliance on the screen, right? on the big screen. Kinski is, Giza Schoen should get so much more credit for this. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I think it's not even close. I don't think I've ever smelled a Giza Schoen that's even close to the artistic genius of Kinski. Um, so yes, this is, this is really, really something special. And I got this from Germany. Rich Mitch ordered bottles from Germany and, um, it ended up being muled over by a friend in the fragrance community. So, I mean, the people that I've met are, like I said in previous videos, vint it's like vintage people. It's like it's like back in the old days when you had a son or a daughter, they wanted to be a doctor. What did you do? You didn't tell them to go online and research, right? You had doctor friends come over and sit with them and talk and have dinner. And it feels like a vintage type community to me. So um, Kinski, I would not have that bottle if not for friends in the community that, that muled it over from England because you can't ship fragrances from England, which is the stupidest rule of all time. So it's okay for a fragrance to get on a plane, travel to England, but once it gets inside England, it's just a fortress. Like, fragrances can't leave England. It's the dumbest, dumbest thing ever. Okay, let's go on to L. So, JKL. So L is... Um, 
Probably my favorite rose patchouli. I like this better than Portrait of a Lady. Instantly, people started saying, oh, this is like Portrait of a Lady. And yes, but the first fragrance that came to mind when I smelled this, this is La Doulet Exquise by Les Abstraits, which I think is the best YouTuber brand I've ever smelled. Um, I, I really wanted to send some to Mark, but I ran out of... I ran out of um, decants, so uh, he only got vintage fragrances, but um, he, he should buy samples, to be quite honest with you. This this is phenomenal work by um, by Eugene and the perfumer Antoine Lee, of course, and the materials they're using from Remy's Material Houses are out of this world. Same materials as Les Indemodables, per se, but this is Bulgarian Rose Absolute, Frankincense, Iris Palladia, Turkish Rose Absolute, Clove, Cumin, Saffron, Atlas Cedar, Castorium Absolute, Myrrh, Apopanax, Patchouli, Spanish Labdanum. And you know, the first thing that came to mind when I smelled Labdular Exquis was Imitation Man by Amouage. Look at the dent I put in that. I love this DNA. Um, so it starts to go Imitation Man in the opening, and then it starts to turn Middle Eastern with kind of more of the resins. There's more resins in here, frankincense and myrrhs and stuff like that. And then it starts to give you a little bit of that portrait of a lady, and in the late dry down, like if you are patient and you wait four, five, six hours, and that is a sign of a fragrance that uses fantastic ingredients that you can pick up these little nuances late into the dry down. You wait four, five, six hours in and you start to get this Castorium Absolute, which is of the highest quality. I have no clue how they found such high quality Castorium to use in here, but it starts to remind me of Antaeus late into the dry down, late. Um, so you have to wait. But this fragrance is just an absolute gem. Um, and I reviewed it off of a decant, and then I bought this with my own money. So this was not sent to me by him. I reviewed it off of a decant if you go watch my uh, like early impression video. But yes, L, La Doulet Exquise, my favorite rose patchouli. Um, okay, next on the list we have a niche, sorry, artisanal fragrance to highlight. And it is a Bortnikoff, and it's probably become my favorite Bortnikoff. I think when I ranked my Bortnikoff video, this was second. But I would put this first right now. This is Lao Oud, because this is his most animalic oud he's ever used. Um, it is pink pepper, magnolia. He loves using those flowers like magnolia. Um, peach, frangipani, beeswax, absolute. Cinnamon, chamomile, peru balsam, cacao, absolute. Oud from Laos, tonka bean, crocodile wood. Um, coffee, oud from India, vanilla absolute, birch tar, and guyac wood. And the opening of this is so beautiful. The animalic bits in here are so beautiful. You get a little bit of that cacao, you get a little bit of the coffee, but the, the different ouds in here, the animalic oud from Laos, the Laotian oud is, I mean, like I said, my favorite Bortnikoff right now, I would say. Um, so yes, Lao oud by Bortnikoff. Um... Animalic, very challenging, but I have worn this to work with no problems. But it is an, 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 an anim, excuse me, an animalic oud, very woody, animalic with the coffee, the cacao, beeswax, peru balsam. It's just fun, fantastic, beautiful, beautiful fragrance from from Bortnikoff. Deserves to be highlighted, um, and I have a full review on the channel if you really want to get into the details. Okay, M. Now maybe a fragrance has never been more. Uh, aptly named to be on this list. Actually, there's two that are like this that are coming up, but this is one. It's called M by Pure Distance. Uh, the original M, not the version 2.0, which I hear smells like a terrible reformulation. I haven't smelled it, but um, this is the original M, which is basically supposed to smell like the inside of an Aston Martin, okay? That is the, um, let me see if I can find the picture. There it is. There's the image. There's the Aston Martin in the background, and there's the guy. You know, that is M by Pure Distance. And rumor is Roja Dove was listed as the perfumer. Um, and if you've smelled Roja's fetiche, which he stupidly discontinued, in my opinion, this is also discontinued, um, maybe there was an issue with the oil. I have no clue what was going on with this, but bergamot, lemon, jasmine, rose, leather, cinnamon, moss, musk, patchouli, vanilla, vetiver, and cystus. Um, this leans more into the leather Fetiche by Roja leans a little heavier into the frankincense and smoke, um, and there's like a fig note in there to give it a little a little bit of something different. But um, man, this is 
I mean, one of my all-time favorite niche leathers from 2010, stupidly discontinued. Maybe it was a supply issue, I don't know, but the best pure distance by far that I've, and I've smelled a couple of them, and some of them are okay. I'll review, I think I've got Shaduna on the list to review by um, Cecile Zerokian, and it's okay, but it's nothing like M. M is um, in a class of its own, at least for me, especially for a leather lover. Pure Distance M is, I mean, um, one of the best niche leathers, in my opinion. Uh, okay, next on the list we have uh, some artisanal fragrances with M. And the first one, sorry to keep reaching over, but it's the only way to do this type of video. Uh, musk Lav. And again, speaking of real musk, so this is um, Lavender, Bergamot, Natural Musks. Sandalwood, Osmanthus, Oak Moss, Labdanum, and Iris. And, you know, if you wanted, like, a musk for the office, like a natural musk for the office, musk lav. Um, the lavender, the sandalwood. It's so classic. It's like a classic fougere, like, fresh animalic barber shop with real musk. It's unbelievable. Um, it's um, antique oils used in here as well. I think um, Lavender Absolute from 1915 to 1920... Uh, aged Mysore Sandalwood, Natural Wild Siberian Deer Musk, and of course there's Iris, uh, I mentioned the Labdanum. It's it's a beautiful, it's not my favorite, I like my musks dirtier, but if you like a clean, like an easier to wear musk, this is definitely one to put on the list. Okay, we, we're going to have to hurry this up, uh, but next on the list we have an, another M, and it is Mysterious Ood. Um... Mysterious Oud by Bortnikoff. And again, there's a full review on this. Needless to say, this is like an oriental oud. So imagine like YSL opium done by Bortnikoff with real oud and you're, and you're in the ballpark. Um, there's a beautiful orange that runs straight down the middle of this. Myrrh, cinnamon, castorium, and different types of oud in the base. But think of like a resinous, a popinax, myrrh, you know, tolu balsam with oud, with real oud. Um, beautiful Indian oud, fantastic stuff. Um, and then... I think we have one more M. We do. It is Musk Habib by Bortnikoff. Again, probably um, one of the most popular Bortnikoffs. And it's an animalic floral musk. And here he used lots of ylang, ylang Lots of that yellow floral that sets it apart. But the musk is beautiful. It's buttery. You know, go watch my review if you want details. Um, I'm going to try to maybe speed this up a little bit because we're only on M. Um... But yeah, Bortnikoff, I have a full review on the channel if you want to check it out. It has that classic Bortnikoff cardamom in the top. Um, and ambergris and deer musk in the base is beautiful, but you do have to be ready for that big hit of ylang ylang, that big white uh, yellow floral. Okay, next on the list we have N. So N is um, a fragrance, the only... Santa Maria Novella that made the list. There was actually a Santa Maria Novella from 1901 on, on the first list, the vintage list. But this one, it's going to be Nostalgia from 2002 for N. And this is a very underrated fragrance. Um, oh, leathery, spicy. If you take a look, uh, that's supposed to be like a rare Italian sports car wheel that the man's hands are holding onto. And there's kind of the windshield right there with the Santa Maria Novella logo. Um, and look, they individually numbered each one of these original bottles by hand. How cool is that? I like these little details like this. I like this bottle. Some people gave this bottle shit, but I actually like this bottle. You know, it's a differentiator compared to the cookie cutter bottles most of the stuff is put in. But um, this is very reminiscent of being in a garage. You know, think of like glues and epoxies and stuff like that. You know, think of like maybe a garage floor where it has that coating to keep it clean and you know, that's the feeling of uh, being in a working man's garage. Um, and the opening is crazy. The opening is one of the craziest openings. You know, there's exhaust fumes and gasoline, but it doesn't smell like um, Fahrenheit. It's a little bit different. Um, tobacco, patchouli, leathers, definitely. It, it does turn easier to wear as time goes on, but I do think that this is worth a sniff. Um, Nostalgia from Santa Maria Novella, probably the oldest house in existence, not just marketing say so, but actually old house. Okay, now we're going to go to a slumber house. I consider them artis or, uh, artisanal, so, and the niche house was Nostalgia. The artisanal house, slumber house, is Norn. So Norn, I'll, I'll do a review of this one of these days, but 
needless to say, it's almost like an artisanal take of um, Fila Nagil to me. I prefer Fila Nagil, believe it or not. But um, this has lots of like pissy notes in the beginning. Everything feels very acidic, you know? Like you went to you went to the description of Fila Nagil I gave earlier with putting your hand in the in the pine tree and the res the sap sticking to your hands, and then you realized, oh shit, I just had 12 beers and you just pissed on the tree, you know, and then you smelled it. And you could smell the piss um, and you know, dirty green, you know, pissy greens. You smell like the weeds and the flowers you just pissed on and it gives off this sweet slash acidic vibe you know that kind of feel it's a very strange fragrance i like it but it but it is it is it's it, it may really put some people off norn is kind of one of those that i think may put some people off with the spicy green sort of um bitter pissiness um that's the only thing i can i can say just as a beginner but um, or as just a quick intro to a fragrance, but I'll do a full review one of these days. Okay, next on the list we go to O, and O was an easy one for me, Overture Man, one of my all-time favorites. We have both of my favorite boozy fragrances on here, Creation E or Enigma Pour Home by Roja, and Overture Man. Um, Overture Man is, um, a cognac fragrance, but it has cumin, grapefruit and probably one of the best not designer grapefruit either but a proper well done grapefruit note ginger saffron nutmeg labdanum myrrh i love the resins uh mastic which is like a very sticky note like it's it smells like it sounds mastic you know uh patchouli cinnamon frankincense and then these animalic notes sandalwood smoked leather and clary sage absolute and this is um kind of the goodbye fragrance from Christopher Chong. So Chong did the man version and then the fish man came in and did the women's version. And it's probably one of the best thing the fish man has done, to be honest with you. Um, if you said, Ramsey, you can have one more bottle of Amouage you don't own, Overture Woman would be in the running. It is an amazing creation by Anique Minardo. Um, and I've reviewed it based off of a decant on the channel, but I also have a full review of Overture Man. But if you want to smell like an Amouage back to form, uh, you know, if you take a look, it almost looks like the curtain is coming down, too. And it did. It came down on Christopher Chong's rain. See how it's kind of moving there? Um, yeah, Overture Man is brilliant. Um, maybe even a masterpiece. Okay, staying with O, we have a couple... We have a couple O fragrances. Um, <clears throat> so we have Bortnikoff's Oud Maximus, which I think I put at the number one spot. And, and it... It is deserving. I just have preferred Lao Oud because it's even more animalic. But Oud Maximus will give you a perfect representation of what the House of Bortnikoff stands for. Woody, florals, you get the beautiful rose um, sort of heart. All these beautiful different types of rose. I think there's like rose, hybrida, jasmine, cinnamon, clove, myrrh, castorium, pig pepper, nutmeg, tonka bean. I think there's multiple types of rose in here. Himalaya. May Rose, Indian Rose, like Rose Attar, all this stuff. Um, there's an Amber, Sh Amber Shimama note in the top, which is like a like a, a, um, a tar thing. Uh, if you research Amber Shimama, there's like a whole backstory to how long they've been creating in India and all this stuff. And then there's all these different types of ouds in here. Oud Roots, Wild, Vietnam, Oud Hindi, Oud Trat. Sandalwood 100K, which is a distillation that him and Russian Adam did together. Tolu Balsam, Apopanax, Cedarwood, Lotus, Labdanum, and Vanilla. And, um, you know, probably one of my favorite rose ouds. Um, but, you know, like I said, Lao Oud has kind of overtook it because of the animalic neck version. Now, this is the version from 2020, which I don't think they're, you know, they've done all these different versions. So the one you buy won't say Oud Maximus 2020 anymore. Now it'll just say Oud Maximus. I think they did away with the... It was too much to keep up with all the different versions, I think. Um, but yes, definitely a rose oud to, to sniff. Especially if you're into the way Bortnikoff does florals. And then we have... Whoops. Um, I guess we already did. Where's the other one? Uh, where is... Did I, did I mess this up? Let's see. I very well may have, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, what did I... Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Excuse me. I'm surrounded by perfumes. Um, and then we have Oud Monarch. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, I think that was Oud Monarch that I showed earlier. It was. I showed Oud Monarch like an idiot, I think. Um, is that what I did? No, I grabbed Mysterious Oud. Apologies. Okay. 
So here's what I did. <laughs> I grabbed. I was like, I wonder why the note listing didn't. That didn't sound right to me. It's like I thought it had more roses in there, but maybe they just didn't list it. Okay, here we go. This is going to be correct now. So, <laughs> Oud Maximus, what I meant to show you guys. There it is. And there's the proper note listing if you want to pause it and read it. I'm not going to go back, but there's Oud Maximus 2020. Um, the other O, which deserves a shout out, is Oud Monarch. Probably one of my favorite chocolate Ouds I've come across. Um, so, there is Oud Monarch. And... Um, Oud Monarch, you see I've got the vintage wood cap version, which is what you want if you can find it. Um, some say the new Bortnikoffs are much lighter than the previous wood cap versions. I don't know. I haven't compared. I don't think I would even care to because I have this and I just wear it and probably move on uh, if it's bad. But Frangipani, Magnolia, Cinnamon, Tobacco, Himalayan Rose, May Rose, Cacao, Papau Oud, Vanilla, Thai Oud, uh, Civet, labdanum and castorium and that um oud was distilled by feel oud which is the russian atom uh Ari, um bortnikov dmitry bortnikov collaboration um and oud monarch really highlights that um floral heart or floral notes which he uses so uh no one uses florals like bortnikov here you get the frangipani you get the magnolia um and then you get the rose and the oud but you get this beautiful cacao note it's it's really stunning so yes, uh, Oud Monarch is an easier Oud fragrance to wear, but yes, it's beautiful. So watch my full review if you want to learn more about Oud Monarch. Okay, next on the list we have P. And for P, um, we have our first and actually only Javoy on the list. So they are a niche house, which you will be hearing more about. I've got the entire sample set, and there's probably five or six I own I'll be talking about doing reviews on. But this one's called Private Label. Private Label is um, actually one of my favorite creations by Cecile Zorokian. Uh, I think my two favorite creations from her are this and Epic Woman, um, which I've reviewed on the channel. I've done a comparison video. Um, I've done a comparison video between Epic Woman EDP and Epic 50, 56, I think. So you can check that out. But Private Label is fantastic. It may be my favorite papyrus absolute or papyrus fragrance. It has this burned paper feel about it. Um, think of like burning a scroll in the old Alexandria library or something. Patchouli, leather, vetiver, labdanum, birch, cedar, and sandalwood. This is kind of one of those fragrances that you can just rock about anywhere. And... Um, I knew I was like, I got to stop fucking around and just buy this bottle. You know, I've had it for a while, but um, it's woody, leathery. I mean, it just, I think one of the best from the brand, Private Label by Javoy. And then, um, staying with P, but moving on to the artisanal side, we have probably the newest fragrance we're going to discuss here. And this is Poseidon. This just came out a month or two ago from, from the house of Sherwood. Um, Poseidon is, you know, his 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 fragrances do have a certain DNA, and some of them do start to smell similar. You're going to smell the cashmere, lavender, and rose and everything from Chrysos in here, but he amped up the um, uh, jasmine. He amped up the florals in, in the heart. You know, uh, it feels like there is um, this very chewy, tuberose, jasmine, like, um, red champaca. That's, that's the floral that's used in here. That's a differentiator. He sent me some, it's on its own. It's absolutely beautiful as well, but red champaca, um, and in the base you have a Sam Oud, Bordeo Oud, Myrrh, uh, Spanish Labdanum, Sumatra Patchouli, Oris, and of course the Ambergris, which he actually put in the heart here. And I think he put the Ambergris in the heart in a couple of his fragrances, but yeah, Poseidon is, um, it is definitely worth a sniff. Hard to find, again, because he only does limited runs. This is, he individually numbers each bottle. I told him he needs to start doing 100 to 200 bottles, and he promised he would have a website up. The only way to buy these now is to contact him directly on Instagram. Um, you can say, hey, Ramsey sent me or whatever. Um, but, uh, but yes, he will have a website up by the end of the year, he promised. So we'll see. But Poseidon is definitely worth a sniff. There's a live stream we did where some of the guys who smelled it first got a chance to kind of weigh in, and they were right. You know, those chewy florals is a good way to describe it. Okay, next on the list we have, excuse me, 
a fragrance that I actually don't want to show you guys, but um, if I didn't, there would be no fragrance to show for Q. So again, it is what it is. Uh, but this is a fragrance I bought on Amazon for like 20 bucks uh, based off of um, uh, Scented Moments channel. Um, recommended this, actually. It's a Latafa fragrance called Kaid. And again, if it wasn't for this, there would be no Q. So Kaid. And actually, if you look for 20 bucks, I mean, this is like leather thing. Um, you know, it's funny. There, there actually is something funny about this. It's that this fragrance from just smelling it from here and wearing it, which I think I wore it once since I bought it and I was like, okay, whatever. Um, and, but from spraying it on the, on the, um, blotter and just kind of, you know, what I remember about the fragrance, this fragrance reminds me of Haltain by, um, Parfum de Marly, which I reviewed off of a sample. And from that sample, I remember I would rather wear this. I would rather wear this. The clone is better than the fucking $430, whatever the hell they're charging. Um, nutmeg, saffron, sandalwood, oud, amber, vanilla, and leather is the notes. You know, for 20 bucks, it's not bad. It's just, I don't like talking about these type of fragrances. Okay, now we're going on to R. R is, um, R is an easy one for me because we have royal oud, which really could be called royal cedar, if you will. Um, but, um, I, um... I'm going to do a full review on that. I don't think I've done a full review. It needs to be reviewed. It's probably one of my most worn creeds between Aventus and, and Royal Oud. Um, I love Royal Oud. I love the Galbanum, the Angelica combination there, the green combination with the cedar and the Oud and Ambergris and all that stuff. Julian Rasconet special. Um, I wore the piss out of Royal Oud when it came out. It was like a signature scent for me along with, um, along with Aventus. Those were like my back and forth scents that I would wear. R, I cheated a little bit, okay, on R, because um, I also wanted to show Roja Parfums Roja. Now, people just call this Oat Lux, but it's actually just Roja is what it's called. Um, it's his $3,500 a bottle retail, which I did not pay, by the way. Shit, with the stupid fucking little flakes in there. Um, and so I, I actually really like this. I reviewed it off of, again, off of a Discovery Atomizer before I ended up getting a bottle. And... Um, it, it it's a very labdanum heavy sheepra, but it does change a lot. It's a little bit of a shape shifter, okay? It's a fragrance that, um, you know, is supposed to be a signature scent for Roja. So he claims that they make 250 bottles on his birthday every year for the whole world. How nice. Um, but, I, but I do like it. It, it has grown on me. Um, the Elang and Jasmine from Gross and May Rose, the florals are very nice, and it's a complex Sheepra, but a very labdanum-heavy Sheepra. So, you know, if if you're a fan of labdanums, I would urge you to check that one out. Okay, next on the list we have uh, Russian Oud for the artisanal side under R. And, I mean, Russian Oud is probably my favorite chocolate Oud of all time. It's also maybe one of the best ambers I've ever smelled. This ambery, everyone compares it to this, like, lava like kind of dry down if you will um but yes russian oud is um is really something special a gourmand oud if you will very high quality agar woods easy to wear good intro oud fragrance for somebody uh, and the amber dry down again high quality ingredients because you can smell this eight ten hours in and it's euphoric it's amazing uh the pure oud with the ambery lava like thickness is just you know, labdanum, um, it's, uh, it's a real combination that is, um, you know, something that just, you won't forget, you won't forget Russian Oud, it, it sticks into your memory, and, and whenever I wear that, I want to wear it again, and again, it's kind of the thing, it's addictive, so, yes, Russian Oud for R, staying with R, we have Russian Musk, have to show this, I mean, probably one of the, uh, most sought after Musk fragrances, what's funny about this is, um, I don't like it as much as Siberian musk because Siberian musk is more animalic, but Russian musk, Adam was telling me they use like a, even a higher quality, um, musk and, um, it ended up coming out like more professional in a way. So yeah, it's not as dirty as Siberian musk, but, but yeah, it is green. You get the green touches with the, um, fur and, um, you know, spices and there is some oud in here, some Thai oud. Um, but the natural musk is, um, it, it's really something, it's, it's, it's a treat to get to smell natural musk. Okay, 
Next on the list, we have uh, Royal Bard from his new collection, Staying with R. And this is the one that was actually, um, I would say, inspired by um, my discussion of Queer de Russie by Chanel, how I said it's like, um, you know, a Tsar in ancient Russia, um, and you're at the banquet, you're at the ball, Every all the important people are there kind of thing. Um, and um, then you go outside and... Do you go get in your new G6? No, you get in your horse and buggy and you can smell the horse shit and, you know, you can smell the animalic parts of the horse and, and you know, you're going along muddy, dirty roads and bumping around. And so the, the Russian Empire and wilderness inspired Royal Barn. And it is animalic, it is dirty, um, and I love it. It's, I still can't decide which one I like more, Royal Barn or Quirtus. Sometimes I think Quirtus and then I wear Royal Barn. I'm like, holy shit, the animalics in here are amazing. Um with the Ethiopian civet, fresh Ethiopian civet, um, truffles, there's like this truffle note in here, um, you know, mandarin leaves, artemisia, cedar wood, hay absolute, there is that crinkly, you know, like you're seeing the countryside from far away and you can see the fields set up into squares where the farmers are tilling it and it's just Russian, um, sorry, royal barn. Okay, next on the list, we have S, and S is Salome. Papillon had to be in the niche list. Salome is one of my favorite uses of Hyracium. Go watch my full review. We're going to have to speed this up. I keep saying that, but it is technically a Shepra. Um, You know, some say it has hints of Diaghilev. It, it does. Uh, I think it has more hints of Bala Versailles, uh, but go watch my review if you want to learn more. But one of the best uses of Hyracium ever, in my opinion. Um very sex on the skin according to liz moore's go watch my liz moore's interview if you want to hear us talking about it okay also staying with s in the artisanal space we have santa galore which if this is actually a sandalwood tree that was cut and made the box out of so you talk about packaging perfection um santa galore is the only problem is the sprayer is stuck which um it won't spray because the juice is so thick and the um, durian, which was used, clogs up the sprayer. So I need to cha either change the sprayer. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I need to fix it somehow. Um, so that's uh, my favorite sandalwood, by the way, is uh, Santal Galore. Okay, and also I have to give a, a quick shout out to Siberian Summer, which is the one I was mentioning that doesn't use real deer musk. It uses a, um, it uses a uh, synthetic deer musk, synthetic musk, but it smells so natural and so beautiful. Yes. I mean the lime, the birch tar, the camphor, like green camphoraceous notes with galbanum and champaca. And, um, then you have that synthetic deer musk, which is just one of the best uses of synthetic deer musk that I've ever smelled. Siberian summer. Okay. Next on the list, we have the moon. We have tea. So I didn't really cheat. We have the moon, um, so the moon, which is raspberry, lychee, le 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 lechi, I guess is how you're supposed to pronounce it, red currant, saffron, frankincense, Turkish rose, oud, and leather, quickly becoming my favorite. Actually, I think I will say it is now my favorite um, from this collection. I still haven't smelled the new hope, or just hope as it's called. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But yeah, Julian Raskine, you know, it has this shisha, hookah-like smell. I, I love the moon. I think it's um, fantastic stuff. Um, and of course, a shout out on tea. We have to talk about this whole collection, the history of Oud. I've done a whole The History of Oud live stream. My favorite Oud collection ever done because it just gives you Oud. Oud in perfumer's alcohol, dosed to the correct amount so you can enjoy it. I pulled out the Kenom one because it looks the best with the real Oud cap, which maybe if I'm like desperate, could you imagine me trying to scrape this off and put it in the sub sub subitism burner? Like, like a junkie, like, oh, I need my Oud hit. But um, could you imagine me doing that? But this is technically a real Oud cap. So, um, so yes, but uh, it's, it's obviously it's not Kinam or this would be, the cap would be worth thousands in and of itself. Uh, but go watch my, I've reviewed every single one of these. I love these so much. I think they are like going to class for Oud. They're just hard to find now. So the history of Oud, the whole collection, uh, I've got reviews on all of them. Okay, now you. Again, not many choices to pick from for you. So you is Onutumam. Um, Onutumam is mint, juniper, lavender, rosemary, oregano, patchouli, amber, carnation, jasmine, castorium, caramel, 
Oak Moss and Cistus. Miguel Matos, the Fragrantica guy, is the perfumer. And you know what? Um, this is the kind of stuff I like. This experimental, crazy... They actually call this the experimental collection that this is in. Um, and it's smoky, leathery, animalic, the castorium. I mean, it smells like the weirdest fougere you've ever smelled. Um, I'll, I'll review it one of these days, but Onutumam is, is nuts, and there's not many U's to choose from. So, um, V is another situation. There's not many V's to choose from, but here's one I have reviewed, and it is Creed's Viking. Um, not Viking Cologne, which is shite, but, um, Viking. Viking is, um, a spicy, fresh fragrance that is well worth your time. You know, it smells like you're smelling the actual Viking ship with ambergris bumping, or, you know, ambergris-infused waters bumping up against it, sea water, the spicy peppermint opening is very, very energetic is the word I would use. Energetic is definitely the word to use here, and, um, it is, it is, um... I think the last great creed, in my opinion. It's very sad we're at that point, but it really does feel like the last great creed. In fact, I went through an entire 100 mil bottle, then I bought this 500 mil. So if that shows you how much I've worn some of these fragrances I'm discussing. Okay, now, next on the list, I cheated a little bit. Again, running out of options for Ws. Um, so um, if you wanted a fragrance, here you go. It is from 1997. It is kind of a designer, yope. Um, but it's called What About Adam? It's also discontinued, but this is probably one of my favorite tomato leaf fragrances. Um, that bitter green leafy feel from the tomato leaf is very unique, and it's mixed with mint, cedarwood, sandalwood, geranium, lavender, vanilla, vetiver, labdanum, and oak moss. It's probably one of my favorite Calice Becker creations, to be honest with you. Um, what About Adam by Yoke? Fantastic for the summer and spring. Very fresh, very green. And staying with W, uh, probably one of my all-time favorite Arise La Dore's. I have not ranked my Arise La Dore's yet, so maybe that'll be a hell of a... I know you people love lists, so maybe that'll be a hell of a list, but War and Peace, W, staying with W. Um, dark, animalic, leathery. He did this co-tincture of, um, or co-absolute, of Wild Siberian Deer Musk, Ambergris, and Castorium. And that is the base. That is like the, you know, what set this um, apart mesmerizing creation as he calls it a juxtaposition of black and white life and death beautiful worn pieces masterpiece level for me um okay next on the list we have x and for x we have x um we have x for men and here you go i mean you can't get much better than x you know i reviewed a fragrance that uh, smells very much like x called reckless Poron by roja and i actually prefer x one of the few times that I prefer the Clive Christian. Um, X is a Giza Schoen. And again, this is the type of Giza Schoen fragrance that I was discussing earlier. It's very professional, grown up, very wearable. You know, you wear this with a suit. And uh, the green cardamom is, is very nice. And the, and the citruses and pink pepper are very energetic and nice. But the cinnamon in here reminds me of Z14, which was on our previous video, the vintage version of this. Um, so it's like a niche version of Z14, which, you know, if you know Italian Cypress, you know that's also a niche version of Z14. Um, but Giza Schoen's X is a, uh, probably one of the best value for money Clive Christians, in my opinion. So Y and then Z. Y is Yoji Om. Um, again, I'm cheating a little bit because this is 1999. I was supposed to say in 20th cent, 21st century, but eh, whatever. Um, so Yoji Om is discontinued also, but, um, if you are a fan of, Things like licorice, rum, coffee, anise, lavender. I think you should try this. The, the woods in here, the leather, the tonka. Um, uh, Jean Patou was the house that owned Yoji Yamamoto at the time. There are some rumors that maybe Jean Carlillo gave some hints to Jean Michael Duriez while he was creating this. I don't know, but he, he came out with something really, really special. Uh, one of the few times Luca Turin and I actually agree. Um, he loves this fragrance. But Yoji Om from 1999 discontinued and finally we have z and again i'm cheating but again you want a fragrance or you want or you don't want a fragrance so z zeno by davidoff um from 1986 oh i love zeno i think zeno set off a revelation a revolution in amber fougeres you know everything that followed it ungaro porlom one Guerlain's Heritage, Ascada Porom, Eigner Free Life, all came from Zeno's, like, breakthrough. Um, 
you know, probably the best Davidoff. I don't know, Davidoff, Davidoff is very good as well, which I does not get enough talk. I'll review that one of these days. But Zeno is one of my all-time favorites. It's like a Fougere meets a Latin, it meets an Oriental because it has that amber and patchouli and, and, and um, tonka bean. The patchouli in here is phenomenal too, by the way, just like it is in uh, Heritage. So yeah, something very, very special. Zeno by Davidoff. Um, and the vanilla, apparently there's a whole article on Fragrantica if you'd like to read about how Michelle Almarac, who's a master, said Shalimar, the vanilla and Shalimar inspired them to make Zeno. And I'm curious if Zeno inspired Jean-Paul Guerlain to make Heritage, like a vintage Guerlain inspired a fragrance that then inspired a Guerlain. Go figure, right? But that's my A to Z niche and artisanal list. Thank you for putting up with an hour and a half of this. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I am late at what I'm supposed to go do, so... Hope everyone has a great Saturday. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.